with Tech for Seniors. Virtual Reality for Seniors, Part 3. The Experience. Now you know the routine. If you like this video, please click the like. And we'd sure appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. It really helps people who want to see these videos in the future. Thanks so much. Let's get on with the show. Now follow me as we go th for a ride on my bike through the town of Comox, British Columbia. Let's start at my house and we're going to go for a little tour. Now you're going to have a lot of fun with virtual reality. Oh wow, there's the wow factor. For only $299, you are going to have so much fun. As seniors, we often have bad news, either with personal health with ourselves or with other people. So we need to laugh, we need to get out, we need to have some fun. And virtual reality certainly will give you the fun that you're going to have. Now whether you want to take dance lessons, whether you want to go for a walk in Paris, or whether you want to visit a museum, or cycle through Holland, it's all possible in virtual reality. Now you're going to be able to communicate with friends. One of the great things about Virtual reality is the ability to communicate from one person to the other in different locations. In, as, in virtual reality, where you actually think you're talking to someone and they're right there in the same room. It is so cool. Uh, you can enjoy lots of games. You can play table tennis. Maybe you want to play table tennis with another group. You have a group every, every Thursday that you play table tennis through. Again, all happens in virtual reality. So you're going to enjoy the games, you're going to socialize, and the other thing you're going to do is we're going to get you moving. As seniors, we have to keep moving. Remember the old adage, if you don't use it, you lose it. So we're going to shake it up, and we're going to show you how to do some moves today. So let's continue on with our little cycle through the town of Comox, British Columbia. Well, now you have your new Oculus, we need to do a setup. You've got it out of the box, well you're going to need to set it up. It's pretty darn easy and it's you can use uh, your cell phone or a PC. In fact, as I said before, it is a standalone computer so you don't need a PC to use it. So I did it with my cell phone, it's real easy to do. Let me go out, let me show you how that's done. Now also, in the setup process, you'll be able to communicate with other people. So if you have other friends that have Oculus devices, then you can communicate through that. So we'll set that up now. Let me show you how it's done. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is to go to your Facebook account. Ooh, you don't have a Facebook account. Remember, Facebook owns Oculus. Now, if you use Microsoft products, you have a Microsoft account. If you use Google products, you have an Android phone, you use a Google, um, you have a Google account. And if you have any Apple devices, you have an Apple account. So it only makes sense that if you have an Oculus device, you're going to have a Facebook account. Because with the Facebook account, you're going to need to register the device. You're going to get um, all the software updates for your Oculus device. You'll be able to purchase apps within the Oculus store and when you connect for multiplayer, again, this all happens through the Oculus software and the connections through the uh, Oculus uh, website. And again, this is why you need a Facebook account. Now, you don't have to put any information in your profile uh, online or anything like that. Just check your privacy settings and make sure you're secure if you're not a regular Facebook user and you'll be just fine. All right, where to start? Well, you'll have pre-installed on your Oculus Quest some basic applications 
that you can use to have fun with, but you can also go to the Oculus Store and download many more applications, games, whatever you want onto your Oculus Quest. You can do this from your phone, you can do it from your PC, or you can do it actually right within the Oculus Quest device. So there are many ways in which you can get more programs, apps onto your device to have lots of fun. Now, uh, the next thing you have to decide is really what do you want to do with the Oculus Quest, right? You have it and you're wondering, oh, wow, this is cool. Well, it can actually be used as a desktop browser. Yes, there's a browser. You can actually browse the internet. You can check your email. And it even links to YouTube, which opens up a huge possibility. Yes, all your YouTube videos can be seen in virtual reality. In fact, you can even watch Huey and I and Bob and the whole gang of Tech for Senior in virtual reality. That's a cool thought, eh? Now, uh, you can also link your television in and you can watch TV in virtual reality. Or you can use it to communicate with other people. So you and I could be having this conversation now in virtual reality as well. Or, uh, which I decided to do, is to use it for exercise. Remember, if you don't use it, you lose it. So uh, the focus today uh, on this video is going to be how I used it in exercise. Now we're going to show you, this is a bike. Uh, this is actually my daughter's bike. I borrowed it from her. And this is sitting in our exercise room, and you'll see it sits in front of a television. Uh, my goal was to uh, have this mounted and to uh, use it with my virtual reality headset on and to do some cycling. You'll see that it's an outdoor bike, but of course it's mounted on a, a, a stand. Uh, I should tell you that the, the, when you put a bike on a stand, it actually gets quite tall. So I need a little uh, footstool there to uh, help me get on and off. And the goal was that I was going to sit on this bike, put my virtual headset on, and cycle around the world and have some really cool fun with it. Now, this is the stand. The stand, uh, the only equipment that I really needed was the stand to mount the back tire on. And this uh, cost around $100, and it just clips on to the uh, rear axle and is really not, uh, not a problem to install at all. Very simple. Now, one thing that I want you to uh, purchase if you are planning to do this is this little device made by Magene, M-A-G-E-N-E. -E. And this is a little device, then you'll see it clips on the pedal there. And this is a Bluetooth connection that connects to the headset, the Oculus headset. And this allows the device to accurately decide how fast you're going. It converts your pedal rotations to speed. So the faster that you pedal, the, the faster you're going to go virtually, right? Uh, but without this, you can't do that. The pedal pedaling wouldn't really count. So this is a way in which your pedaling links in to virtual reality. Uh, these are very common. You can, uh, this is 20 bucks for one of these devices and it just clips on the pedal. Now I didn't find, uh, after a while using the bike, uh, I found a little uncomfortable. As you get older, sitting on a bicycle seat isn't, uh, isn't great. And the other thing that happens is that particularly for my wife who has some arthritis, she couldn't get on the bike. So the other thing that you can do is get a recumbent bike. This is the one I bought. This is about $300 and it's a recumbent bike and it works great. It's comfortable, you can sit there and you can do all the cycling with a recumbent bike. Now learning the equipment. Now learning the equipment is fun and it's easy. It's a whole new world that you're going to be entering and it's foreign to you. You've never done this before. It is totally immersive. You're going to be completely in a different world and oblivious to the outside world. You'll also need to move and activate menus. Uh, you'll be setting a floor level and also you set peripheral boundaries around where you can move so to keep you safe, because safety is a big concern. Now I want to talk a little bit about a common problem in virtual reality, particularly for beginners, and that is nausea. So I'm going to give you some advice. 
The first thing is take it slow. Start with a seated or sedentary experience and try not to do too much in the way of motion to begin with. It takes your brain a little bit of time to get used to the new experience that you're going to have. The second thing is don't push through virtual reality sickness. Stop what you're doing, reassess to assess the situation, go away, maybe try a different application. Now, if you are having problems and you're in a game and you're sort of moving along in a sliding sensation, the best thing I find is if you actually start to move your arms and legs. Uh, this, this triggers your brain and says, oh, we're actually, this is a correct thing to be doing. We're actually moving. And that sometimes helps. The other thing is the um, bracelets that you can wear around your wrist. The have that little ball that pushes in on the uh, front part of your wrist. This, this is a P6 acupoint pressure. And we often use these for people in airplanes or, um, or in, in ships for, for air sickness or ocean sickness. And these, um, these, these work quite well as well in virtual reality. Also, a spearmint is, is helpful. So chewing some Wrigley spearmint gum or sometimes some mint candies can be helpful. And the other thing, which is an interesting one, is a fan. Get a fan and point it towards you from the front of the room and have the air blowing towards you. This does two things. First of all, it does help with the nausea, but it also, sends, you get a sense of direction and always sort of can point yourself back in the right direction. It's quite, it's quite helpful, actually. Now, I wanted to tell you about a website and a software program that I strongly recommend, and it's called VZ Fit. There's two options for this. One is free, and you can sign up for free, and there's a paid version. This is a cycling app, a fitness app, that really works well for you. Uh, the free version, you get one ride or one route per month, Whereas if you have the paid version, which is $10 a month, then you get unlimited. You can cycle all over the world. They have groups you can go cycling with. You can uh, get coaches. There's all sorts of things that you can do uh, with this application. And it's an application or a game that you would download onto your Oculus Quest. Now, why is this so important? Well, first of all, you can set it so you're a novice or a beginner. And the first thing when you're trying to ride a bicycle like I have with my stationary bike, is, um, of course, the bike doesn't move, but you are going to be moving in the, um, in, the, uh, in the game. So what they do is they work it so that it, usually the routes they choose are straight routes so you don't have to turn. And also they've developed it so that if you tilt your head to the left, then you can turn and bank to the left. If you tilt your head to the right, you turn and bank to the right. Also, it uses uh, Google Maps, the road view, for their travels through the different, um, different areas. So if you come across a car, the car sort of just flattens out and you go right over top of it. It's a bit weird, but you'll get used to it and you don't have to turn. And so it makes it much easier, particularly when you're getting used to this. So if you're trying, planning on using uh, to use your... Um, uh, Oculus Quest for a uh, fitness and, and riding a bike like I tried, then for sure you really want to use this, this app. It's called VZ Fit, and I've put the link uh, in the uh, uh, just below uh, on the screen. So give this a try. So just remember when we're seniors exercising, the most important is your safety. You are going to be totally immersed in a different world, so we want to make sure you don't hurt yourself. So learn the equipment and start slowly. The other thing I'd like you to do is set some realistic goals. The most important thing is to have fun. And remember, if you've had some health issues, maybe you've had a small stroke or something, you have maybe some eye-hand coordination problems, then there's all sorts of applications in virtual reality that can help you improve your eye-hand coordination. Virtual Reality for Seniors, Part 3, The Experience. Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Hope you've enjoyed the show today. Bye now. Windows 10 tips and tricks that I presented 
to a help group recently online. I'm Huey Poplock. Notice I have my, my browser. Mm -hmm. If you go to the corner, you see that double arrow? Yes. Or here, it's a, an arrow side to side. Uh -huh. And if I come down here, it's going to be, so it depends on where it is. So I can just click and drag. And then I can take a, another window that I've got. Let's uh, see if I got something open on here. Yeah, right here. I can take this, slide it over, and then move it. Now I've got both on the screen. And they will they will function independently, right? Yeah, you can go back. You can go back. You got to go back and forth between them. Your phone. But you know, there's the video. You can also get it easily using. And I can stop it, and I come back over here, and I can. Uh, click here and do whatever I need to do and then come back. So that's why it's called Windows. And I can even make this smaller. Using the all apps list or uh, if you have it. On stop this and I can open up, uh, say, Notepad. It's over here on my other screen, so I'll bring it over. Let's see. Come on. I can bring it over here. Make it small. And so now I got a Notepad set up. So I can have different windows sized. Sort of works like text boxes and pictures that you put in. Yeah, so you can do whatever. And the nice thing about it is if you've got something uh, in one that you need to drag to the other for whatever reason, you can do that. Oh. Now there's, now there's one other thing in Windows that you can do is let's take this. If you grab, let's see, you grab it at the top and then real hard move it over to the side it automatically will make it one half of a screen. You, you have to play around with that to make it happen. <laughs> uh, and right now, let's see if I can grab it here. Yeah, and I can grab it off of there. Uh, I can't do it to the other side because what I have is another screen over to the right. Yes. Another, another monitor and it just goes over and it just, it, it opens up on the other screen. Uh, the other half of it but all you have to do is there you got to just bring it all the way over it'll make a half a screen then you can actually uh take something and i can let's see i can drag this over now whoops i'll drag it over to this side and where'd that other one go here over here we'll take this we'll take this now i'm going to take this one do the same and now i've got them 50 50 and i got both of them filling up the screen. But what I can also do is I can move one here and make the other one bigger if I wanted to. But so if, now if I got you... two things. So you can move things, you know, you could move things back and forth. So I can say, okay, I'm here. I'm going to copy that. Come back over here and paste. And there it is. Okay, now if you are on the the uh, screen that is the uh, has the browser on it, if you were to move it up and down, would the other the other one would not move, right? It's independent. Yeah, right now it's locked to the side of the screen. So if I move it down, it then makes it so it can move around. Okay. And the other one's not moving. And this is also here too. Don't forget. Okay. So these. I can move this one over here. I can move this one up here. I can take this one and we'll move it here. And so we can yeah, move it all the way around. This is why it's called Windows. I got different windows open. Seems. And let me just show you. Now I got three things open. Let's just, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open bunches of things here. Uh, I may have to change the screen. No, that's fine. Good. So I got something here and it's blocking the other. So if I click this, it brings it forward. Yeah, but remember there's something behind here. So again, hold the Alt key down and tab and there's everything I've got open. So I can come back up to here, see how that's highlighted when I let go. It's It's got it out in front. Let's see what was I, what else did I have behind there? Um, so this, yeah, I got this. And uh, there's a couple of these things around the other monitors. So let's see, you've got this. So I can bring whatever I want forward just by holding the Alt key down. And as I tab through, and when I find the one I want and I let go, it's forward. 
uh, go, and then, go through and, that again. Uh, okay. We, okay. I'm holding the alt. The, I'm holding the alt key down. Go ahead. On your keyboard, and I hit tab. Still holding the alt key down. Okay. Okay. That's what I missed. Okay. That's the trick. And then if you and hit that, tab, and again, then while you're holding, and, and then keep hitting the tab oh, key, okay. okay. And it'll it'll move it from window to window, and then when you get to the one you want. You let go, and that one will be then the pro the active window. That's you fantastic. Let go of the alt window. I'm sorry. You let go of the alt window. Yeah, I let go of the alt key. Yes. Yeah, the alt key. Yeah, and that that goes away, and then you're that's the primary, or the active window. And yeah, I, it, I call that the background, and I had a hard time getting to it. Now I know how to get to it. Yeah, it's very easy, and it's. Uh, uh, yeah, because otherwise, yeah, I got something down here, and I'd have to click down here to bring it forward. Okay. And then if I come back here, it's it's partially there. And if I go here, oh, I can't. Menu, you can click on it from your start menu. I just or hit, you can type in the search box. That wasn't me. That's not me talking. That's the video. So anyway, so I've got all of these open. And again, I want to get to this. I can click there, but if it happens to be down here, I don't see, I can't get to it or see it. So I hold the alt key and then tab, and then I can come to it. And there that's, it is. That, to me, that's fantastic. Yes, it Good. is. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Do not buy a Chromebook before watching this video. And you know the routine. If you like this video, please click the like and would sure appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out and allows other people to continue seeing the work we do. Thanks again. Let's get on with the show. So what is a Chrome box and why should you consider a Chrome box instead of a Chrome book? Well, let's look what a Chromebook is. A Chromebook is a laptop, of course. It has a monitor. It has a keyboard. It has a speaker. It is a computer. It has a box. It has a touchpad. And, of course, a battery. All those components go into a Chromebook. So what is a Chrome box? A Chrome box is basically a Chromebook minus all those devices. Let's go back and have a look at that again. So when you go to purchase a Chromebook, one of the things you look at is a monitor. You look at the screen. All sorts of questions arise. How bright is the screen? How large is the screen? Do you want a big screen or a little screen? Or is it an OLED screen? A lot of times you're spending a large amount of money on a Chromebook just for that screen. Take a look at the keyboard. Sometimes you want a bigger keyboard, a smaller keyboard. Keyboards vary. Let's look at your speaker. How many times have I heard, gee, I like my Chromebook, but it doesn't have a very good speaker. And then, of course, there's the computer component. And then the touchpad. Maybe you want a mouse. Maybe you don't want to use a touchpad. And then there's the battery. You're paying for a battery. In a, in a laptop. So what happens if you want to have a large monitor? Suppose you want to have multiple monitors. You don't like the little monitor that comes with a Chromebook. You want to have two big monitors like I have in my display in my office here. Why should you have to pay for the small monitor you don't want? The same thing would come with the keyboard. Maybe you, have your, you already have a keyboard. Why do you have to buy a keyboard? And again, a speaker. You can put great speakers connected into a Chrome box. And again, it, you don't have to pay for the touchpad because you have, uh, maybe you want to use a mouse. And if you're going to use it and not transport it around, why do you need to pay for a battery? If you're always going to leave it plugged in on your desk, why pay for a battery? So what are the advantages to a Chrome box? Well, first of all, a Chrome box is customizable. In other words, uh, you can um, you can add monitors, displays, uh, you can add uh, all sorts of peripherals such as a, a keyboard, a mouse, anything you want to plug in to your Chrome box, you can make it as you want it. 
it's upgradable. So if, as time goes along, if you want to increase RAM or you change the components within the Chrome box, this is often very, um, very possible. And you only pay for the components that you require. You don't need a battery. If you're going to keep it sitting on your desk all the time, why pay for a battery? So you don't require a battery. And the Chrome OS is exactly the same as a Chromebook. It still does all the same things that we talk about. Uh, you do not require virus protection. It's all built into the Chrome operating system. It's exactly the same as a Chromebook. Uh, and the other thing is there's no moving parts. Everything in a Chrome box is all solid state. It always has been. There has never been a spinning drive or any moving parts. So the longevity is great. You can connect unlimited peripherals. Chrome books as well as Chrome boxes can connect to almost anything and you can daisy chain uh, as many devices as you want to plug into these. And again, it's very, very small. You can put these in the palm of your hand. So as a seasonal visitor, suppose you, try, you visit like I do down to uh, Mesa, Arizona, put your Chrome box in the palm of your hand and take it down with you. You don't have to lug a big computer or even a big Chromebook down there. You just have a Chrome box. All right, I've chosen three Chrome boxes to show you today. The first two are from Best Buy. The third is purchased on Amazon. These were priced today, the uh, 14th of April, 2021 in US dollars. So the first two you can purchase today at, uh, at Best Buy. The uh, model that you see before you is the uh, uh, Chrome box by Acer model 3867. This is uh, $279 and you will see this, uh, you'll see it mounted behind the uh, display monitor in the lower left. Now you can view, read, watch, stream, listen, and learn with this, this Chrome box. It has the newest Intel Celeron processor and it supports a wide range of multimedia capabilities. Of course, it gets automatic updates to keep your data secure as with most as with Chrome operating system. It has an ultra quick data transfer and it has USB 3.1 type C ports and you can expand your viewing area and have multiple monitors. The Chromebox lets you view content on two displays through an HDMI and type C port on the back. This makes multitasking a whole lot easier. You can spread out your work, browsers, mirror content, and extend a single browser across multiple displays. All for $280. This is the uh, Chromebox. Now let's look at a little bit more expensive model. This is the, um, this is the uh, Chromebox Intel Core. This has an i3 uh, processor in it. Uh, again, it has the similar um, capabilities as I just described. You'll see the uh, ports on the front and you'll see that the, uh, I've shown you this with two, uh, two monitors connected. Again, if you look at the mouse, the keyboard, and the monitors would all plug in to the uh, ports in your Chrome box as displayed here. Uh, this one is made by, the last two were made by Acer. This is made uh, by Hewlett Packard. This is one of Hewlett Packard's Chrome boxes. This is the G2 Chrome box. This is uh, 200 and, about $280. It's available on uh, Amazon. This comes with a Celeron processor, four gigabytes of RAM, a 32 gigabyte SSD. It has the Chrome operating system and an Intel HD graphics 610 card. This is, uh, as I mentioned, $279. So you should consider a Chromebox for your next purchase. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.